talks with U.S. sanctions on Iran set to go back into effect Tuesday morning. What will renewed tensions mean for the price of crude oil? Joining us now is Dan Eberhardt, CEO of Denver-based oil and gas services firm Canary. Dan, thanks so much for being here today. So Jackie ran oh, through some of these. Me. Absolutely. We have um, some things that are bearish for the price of oil when it comes to things like the production cuts, at least that were agreed to by OPEC in late June, but then potentially bullish for the price of oil with what's going on with the renewed sanctions or the reignited sanctions against Iran. Obviously, you run an oil services company. What do you think will happen with the price of oil and how could it benefit you potentially? Sure. So I, I think we're going to exit oil uh, around $100 a barrel uh, WTI by the end of the year. I think there's a lot of bullish indicators. You know, I disagree a little bit with what uh, the, the, um, the, uh, the idea that the Saudis were being cautious. I think they've really overstated the amount of excess production they had. They said they were going to ramp up production uh, ba both back channel with the U.S. and publicly. And what you saw is the production from June to July fall about 200,000 barrels a day. So I think that they're struggling to ramp up production as much as they promised. And I think you've got to overlay that with pipeline uh, takeaway capacity problems in the Permian and then falling production in Venezuela and then falling production in Angola, you know, coupled with synchronized world growth. I think we're in for higher oil prices and higher prices at the pump later in the year. And then how does Iran play into all of that? I mean, doesn't that also push prices higher if there's sanctions on the exports yeah. from Iran oil? Yeah, sure. So Iran exports kind of between 2.4 and 2.7 million barrels a day of oil. And I think that with the sanctions, uh, you know, the market is expecting about a million to a million and a half barrels a day to be taken off the market. And so I think that's going to further crimp, further crimp supply. And I think that's just going to lead to more bullish pressure. And I think that a lot of people, a lot of people expected uh, the U.S. to issue a bunch of waivers and the, the rhetoric coming out of the Trump administration via the tweets and uh, via the, the uh, other people in the cabinet, I think, just points to it going in the opposite direction. And so I, I think we have really a recipe for OPEC not being able to supply as much as we thought, uh, pressure from supply in Iran due to sanctions, pressure okay. from Venezuela and a good economy. I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around. You think 100 bucks on WTI by the end of the year? That's 50 percent increase mm -hmm. from where we are right now. Uh, and uh, well, need... we, we should be we we should be about 70 dollars uh, a barrel WTI right now, right? So it'd be about right. a 30 percent increase. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what I'm getting at is you name all these fundamentals that are going to push it to 100 dollars. Um, what what's why isn't the market going there now if they if we all know about these fundamentals at this point what's going to be the catalyst that moves us that much higher from here well I think there's speculation about what's going to happen with Iran is there going to be a meeting is there going to be a deal is the US going to uh, um, uh, issue issue waivers and I think that as that plays out I think you'll see you'll see uh, the administration seems to be moving towards a more hardline direction I also think Venezuela is a big unknown look at in two years ago, Venezuelan production was 2.2 million barrels a day. Right now, it's about 1.34, and I think it will end the year somewhere around a million barrels a day. So if you have economic growth adding a million, million two barrels a day to the worldwide demand this year, and you have all these supply constraints, and then you have Saudi Arabia sputtering, sputtering, sputtering to get to increase supply, you know, just June over July, as they promised, I think you have a recipe for a higher oil price. Dan, very quickly, if we can, we know mm -hmm. that you are a big Republican sure. donor, you largely mm -hmm. support the Republican Party, but you're not a big fan of tariffs at all. Um, so what does that mean for where you're putting your money? Are you not putting it with the Republican Party as long as the larger group supports this tariff out of the administration? Oh, I, no, I, I definitely support the administration in general and support the Republican Party. And I think we've got the best ideas for economic growth and national security and education policy moving forward. I do think that the, where Trump is on trade is a little bit dicey for the macro economy in the short term and for our industry, you know, we have to compete against in the oil business, compete against OPEC, compete against West Africa. And so just at, at our company, Canary, we're having to raise prices. You know, a 25 percent tariff may be in a landed cost increase of high 20s or low 30s for us as a business. So we've got to price those. We've got to move those price increases along to our customers. So I think it will impact uh, the economy in the short term. But I think it's courageous for Trump to do something that Obama or George W. Bush didn't really handle, which is, you know, China and some of these other countries being hypocrites on trade.